These days it's all about viewing on the go, right? Whether you're stuck in traffic, watching a movie that's playing in the SUV in front of you, or catching a flick on your phone. It seems like if you can't put it in your pocket or under your airplane seat, then it's not worth it. But come on, is a four inch monitor really the best way to take in the cinematic sweetness of a film like The Dark Knight? If you really want to feel like you're in a movie, there's only one place to go. IMAX. IMAX was derived from the words maximum image, and you might be tempted to call it maxi, but that doesn't begin to capture the immersive experience of watching eye-popping 3D docs or major Hollywood flicks in a theater like this. So now I'm here with Greg Foster. He's the president of IMAX Filmed Entertainment. This is the man who decides what gets shot and what gets shown in IMAX. IMAX is about scope. IMAX is about transporting you into this immersive world. Filmmakers are secret weapon. We are literally dealing with the biggest and most visionary filmmakers out there, and they want to constantly push things. Movies that rate the IMAX treatment, Matrix Revolutions, Dark Knight, Watchmen, Superman Returns, the list goes on. For an audience, IMAX technology is in your face, literally. There's a relationship, the geometry, between where people sit and the screen that, that brings people inside the movie. A typical IMAX screen is 52 by 72 feet, way larger than normal movie screens. It's also placed closer to the audience and is slightly curved. That means the images on screen completely fill your field of vision. Add in stadium seating so you don't have to worry about big dude right in front of me syndrome and up to 18,000 watts of digital surround sound and you are ready for a primo movie going experience. When filmmakers make a movie, they're not usually making the movie for a small 40 inch television screen. They're making the movie for, if they can, their imagination for a 70 foot wide screen. But how do you fill that screen with a crystal clear image? especially if it wasn't shot with a specialized IMAX camera. I'm heading to the IMAX vault to find the guy with all the answers. David Keeley. Uh, Nar. What's up, man? David is the head of post-production, and he is impervious to cold. Why is it so cold in here? Well, it's to keep the film good for a long period of time. This vault is a constant 55 degrees, preserving 80% of all IMAX movies ever made, including... Dude, the dark... Dude, hey, the, the dark night. Can I, can I take one of these home? You have plenty of them. No, Warner Brothers would not be happy. I'll keep my house at 55 degrees. <laughs> uh, not a chance. Even if you didn't mind hyperthermia, it would still be tricky keeping an IMAX negative in your house. IMAX is a motion picture system that was developed in, in the, the late 60s, where we get the largest negative in the world. The IMAX film negative is nine times the size of regular 35 millimeter film. Nine times. What's nine times the size of me? A humpback whale. IMAX film is called 7015 because it's 70 millimeter film with 15 perforations instead of four. And it's horizontally, not vertically oriented. That huge negative means the image stays sharp when it's blown up big on the screen. That's how we did it before. We still do it that way, but now we also have a digital versions of our film and film version. IMAX films can be shot using massive 3D IMAX film cameras that weigh about 200 pounds, or they can take a conventional negative and digitally transform it in high-tech clean rooms. What's this thing? Look at this. That, that stick to get dirt off your shoes. We're gonna, because of that hair, because you've got quite a mop up there. You like the, the yeah, bed head? I, I, oh, I love it. Oh, oh man. That's so nice. Oh, my gosh, David. We're like Laverne and Shirley. That's right. We are Laverne and Shirley. So, David, I take it this is the first step in converting a conventional film into an IMAX film, right? What we're doing here, we have a 35 millimeter scanner and a 65 millimeter scanner. And what we're doing is taking the analog film and putting it in the digital do domain, making it into ones and zeros. And this is where we scan Dark Knight, where we're scanning for Transformers 2. But basically there's a lens here uh, and there's a light source and it's scanning, you know, pixel for pixel as that moves along. This process involves scanning the whole movie one single frame at a time. And this is this, this tells you exactly what frame just got right. scanned. That's this right. shows you it, and and this tells you how much time you have left. Right. Wow, how cool! And you're hearing this click. That's 12.8 seconds apart. It's an 8K scan. 
Yeah. When you say 8K scan, that's 8,000 pixels per frame? Yes, correct. 8,000 pixels across. Imagine what would happen if you put your nose up to a movie on your phone. A big mess of pixels. This 8K scan means you can blow up images to the size of a barn and still keep all that fine detail. So it takes a good long time. And so film... for one movie, how long? Well, I mean, you know, we could be scanning here literally for, for months sometimes. So where does it go? To a server? We have 100 terabytes of storage. That's where it's going now through fiber optics into our storage area network to get ready for us to do the next process, which will be dust busting. Yep, he just said dust busting. But it's not like cleaning the chip crumbs out of your couch. So if there is dirt in the scan, then you have to what's called dust bust and get that dirt out by a process by just looking at every frame and say, oh, there's a piece of dirt, and then you have a pro computer program to replace those pixels, and then it goes to the next process, the DMR, the digital remastering process up in, in Toronto. The DMR process applies a top secret algorithm to the scans that sharpen the grain of ordinary film, a step you don't need when shooting with an IMAX camera, like this one. Then it gets sent back here for final quality control and transformation into a film print or a digital projection format. And we're basically just doing overall uh, uh, corrections here, take into account our extra brightness, our extra contrast for the IMAX projector. This step also allows IMAX to make special adjustments, like compensating for the extra darkness caused by stylish 3D glasses. Put your 3D glasses on. Now, since you're, this isn't in 3D, let's put two 3D glasses on because okay. you gotta pretend you're a projector and a viewer. Oh, I and do, then, okay. That's right, and then we look at, look at this and we decide, you know, because it gets a little bit darker, so for 3D you have to adjust and compensate for your glasses, and we do that in here. And uh, <laughs> do the guys adjusting actually put on two glasses like this? Well, well I do. It's a very <laughs> sophisticated do. process now. <laughs> this is the scientific process. That's correct. Now you've gone through the DMR process. You've finalized the color uh, corrections, um, and now what? Well, now you go into uh, um, a process where you, you package it, you make the DCP. The DCP is the digital cinema package. Basically, the whole movie on this little guy. The hard drive goes in just a little case like this. You can also get your IMAX movie delivered on film, but you better wear a weight belt. Whoa, so wait, wait, hold on, hold on, let me get this straight. Okay. We got a movie on this hard drive. That's right. And the same movies on all, how many reels is this? This movie is about two and three quarter hours. It's 48 reels or one hard drive. Okay, I'll take the hard drive. Fine for me, but a lot of IMAX theaters still use film projectors. Every new theater built though, will have a digital system. How do you ship all this? Over here behind us, we've got uh, the, the 70 millimeter prints. We'll go in two of these stacks. Dude. You ship IMAX movies in pizza boxes? Yeah, we do. They're, they're very, they're, they're really deep dish. Once these boxes reach the theater, the film has to be pieced together, then loaded onto a platter. How, how many people does it take to load this on the reel? About six. Six people? Yeah. We have lifts in the theaters, you know, like little... There's uh, fork lifts that are equipped in the IMAX theater? That's correct. To move these buttons. You're not even kidding, are you? No, I'm not kidding. So all this just gets threaded up in the projector right over here, right? That's correct. David took me to the IMAX headquarters projection booth to check out both film and digital projection systems. So it's coming for the platter, the film, and then it looks like it gets threaded in the projector. Right. Why are there two? Uh, well, this is that's the feed, that's input and, okay. and output. And if it was 3D, there'd be two strands going in and two strands going out. One for the left eye, one for the right eye. Okay. Just, just like in the digital projector right here. So these are the digital projectors? These, these are the digital projectors. Can I plug the hard drive yeah, in there? Yeah, you can. We'll just show you how you do that. And awesome. Just, here's a USB cable. Yes. We'll put it there. And that's all there is to it. Well, it may... That's it? Well, that's it. But you know what? It's not instant. This is a two and three quarter hour movie. And we'll just plug it in there. And it takes about two and three quarter hours to actually ingested in the projector. The picture quality is the same with both projectors. The main difference is the real estate. These projectors look roughly half the size of the film projector. Right. Why, why is that? Is it just because the film has to live in there or is the lamp bigger or well, I mean, the lens bigger? You know, or? These, are, these are, you know, 40 year old designs. So therefore, you know, it's a mechanical projector. So mechanical things are bigger than digital things. This is we just know all that. microchips and... That's correct. Hey David, now that I've seen what goes into IMAX movies that make them so awesome, I really want to go watch one. Okay, well, why don't you go down to the theater and I'll power up the system and you'll see IMAX for real. Yes, thanks man. Thanks man.
Thanks to the specialized technologies developed at IMAX, we can all feel like we are in the movies. Hit me!